so let's learn how to write chemical formulas to understand this you must know what exactly is a chemical formula now everyone of you must have been to your chemistry labs in your school there you must have seen some bottles arranged in your labs and on those bottles there is a label and on those label it is written something like this for example i am taking hydrogen chloride and below it hcl right so this is the name of the chemical and this is the chemical formula of that chemical or another example you can take H2SO4 or MgSO4 etc. All of them are the chemical formulas. Now this chemical formula exactly tells us the relative proportion of the elements of the elements in a molecule. Okay so uh did you understand what exactly is a chemical formula i hope yes now moving on let's see how do we write these chemical formulas to write these chemical formulas there are certain rules to understand those rules first you need to know about two things that is valency and the symbol of the element that is present in our formula okay so let's understand what is valency valency is basically the combining capacity of an element what is combining capacity let's see uh, for example this is an atom this atom has total number of 8 electrons in its outermost shell. So we can say that this atom is stable as it is able to achieve its octet or we can say that octet rule is followed. Now let's take another atom. And in this atom, there are six electrons present, right? So, is this atom stable or is this atom achieving the octet rule? I guess no. So, what will it do to achieve the octet rule? It will gain two electrons, okay? So, since it needs to gain two electrons, we can say that valency of this atom is 2. Okay. Similarly, let's take another example. Now, this atom has three electrons and it is in its outermost shell. So, to follow the octet rule, it will lose three electrons right as it cannot gain electrons because of energy reasons so what will it do it will lose three electrons so we can say that now the valency of this atom is three so i hope you understood what exactly is valency let's take one more example now let's take sodium atom as we all know the atomic number of sodium is 11 writing it 2 comma 8 comma 1 so it is ready to lose one electron as it has one electron it's out in its outermost shell so we can say that valency of sodium is 1 similarly magnesium the atomic number is 12 we can write it as 2 comma 8 comma 2 and hence we can say that valency is 2 so this was all about valency another another thing that you need to know was the symbol of element right that 
is important. Now a list is given in NCRT that you need to memorize. Moving on to the rules of how to write the chemical formula, we need to follow a method. That method is known as crisscross method. Let's see what exactly is crisscross method. I am taking a very common example of water. In water, hydrogen and oxygen are present. Now, first of all, we need to write down the symbol that we have written. Second thing is writing down the valency. Now, the valency of hydrogen is 1. As in its outermost shell, there is only one electron and it needs one more electron to complete its duplet. And oxygen is having the valency of 2, 2 comma 6. It needs two more electron. So it will gain two electrons and the valency is 2. Now what we need to do is crisscross. This two will go in the foot of H and this one will go in the foot of O. So we can write this as H2, O and 1. Now this is not necessary to write one here so we will write it as h2o and this is how we will get the chemical formula of water now moving on to more examples let's talk about nacl okay so how a question is asked in exams you will be asked to write down the chemical formula of sodium right now how do you get this NaCl from this let's see first of all always the cationic part is written first and then the negative part or anionic part now for sodium the symbol is Na and for chloride the symbol is Cl as we all know the valency for sodium 2 comma 8 comma 1 is 1 and valency for chlorine 2 comma 8 comma 7 again 1 it will gain one more electron so 1 again crisscrossing Na1 Cl1 we don't need to write 1 1 so NaCl is its chemical formula now going on to another example let's see another example of aluminium chloride Okay, so writing the symbol, the symbol of aluminium is Al and symbol of chloride is Cl. Now, the atomic number of aluminium is 13, so its configuration is 2, 8, 3 and hence its valency is 3. And for chlorine, atomic number is 2, 8, 7, so its valency is 1. Again, crisscross, it will be written as ALCL3. Now, you must be wondering from where does this 3 chlorine atom came. Now, this is done to balance the charges. Okay. Like here we can see that aluminium had the configuration of Sorry, aluminum have the charge so charge plus 3 whereas chlorine only had charge minus 1. So to overcome this uh, charge disbalance, we took 3 chlorines and then the overall charge in chlorine became minus 3 and this plus 3 and minus 3 overall balance the charges. Now let's take the example of calcium chloride again writing the symbol of calcium as Ca and symbol for chloride as Cl now the atomic number of calcium is 20 writing its configuration 2 comma 8 comma 8 comma 2 so 2 is in the outermost shell and for chlorine it's 2 comma 8 comma 7 7 so it will gain one more electron and its valency will be 1 
let's put their valency for calcium it's 2 and for chlorine it's 1 again performing the crisscross method we will get ca cl2 this is our chemical formula again one calcium ion and two chlorine atoms balancing the net charge moving on to towards the polyatomic ions now what are polyatomic ions ions which are having elements more than one for example for so4 minus 2 is in polyatomic anion since it is having two atoms two different kind of atoms okay so uh, you can see the list in the ncrt and according to that you must memorize all of them let's see one example hydrogen sulfate writing their symbols and symbol for sulfate is so4 minus 2 again what we need to do is cross crisscross their charges as the charge on hydrogen is or we can say the valency is 1 and for sulfate it is minus 2 performing the crisscross method we will get h2 so4 right so this is the chemical formula now another example that i'm gonna take is magnesium sulfate again writing the symbol mg now the uh, atomic number of magnesium is 12 so the valency is 2 writing down its valency and then again performing the crisscross method we will get mg2 so here again this two will come like this now now both of them will simplify and the answer will be mg so4 okay again writing down the symbol for aluminium al and for oxide it is o talking about their valency the atomic number of aluminium is 13 so 2 comma 8 comma 3 and for oxygen it is 2 comma 6 so its valency is 2 and its valency is 3 writing down their valency below their symbol and again doing the crisscross method this two will go in the foot of aluminium and this will go in the foot of oxygen and Al2O3 is our example now our last example is aluminium sulfate again writing down the symbol for aluminium al and for sulfate it is so4 minus 2 now the valency as discussed before for aluminium is 3 and for sulfate the charge is 2 again performing the crisscross method we will get al 2 and so4 3 now here's one problem how will you write this this is quite confusing right so in problems like this when there are more than one polyatomic anions sorry ions what you need to do is you need to put a bracket so this is how you write the chemical formula and this comes out to be aluminium sulfate so this was the complete explanation for uh, understanding the chemical formula all you need to do is check your ncrt 
check the tables check the symbols of these polyatomic anions ions and all other elements